Hello, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be looking at a DIY power supply. Now this particular one is for the Dragon 32 and it replaces the entire power board at the back end of the Dragon. Now what's special about this is it doesn't require the ridiculous transformer that the Dragon 32 needs. It needs some really, really bonkers voltages. Something like plus or minus 28 and all sorts of shit. Anyway, this replaces that board completely and uh, you can just power it from a single barrel connector. So this is a kit and it came from Dragon Plus Electronics and you get a nice printed manual as you can see how to assemble it there's not a, there's not a massive amount to it. Um, it it's literally all you can see here um, handful of components some surface mount gear and a few connectors really not much at all so uh, I'm going to assemble this up and uh, yeah I'm going to go from there uh, one thing to note about this board is it has uh, breakouts to the composite and the sound. Now this is particularly nice and uh, this AV output here means that you can drop in um, an RGB to HDMI internally in the Dragon if you wanted to and just pick it up from here. You can also populate the 5 volt standby up at the top here and uh, if, if you wanted to. I I will not be I don't think and uh, yeah so let's get this built so generally when you're building a board like this you'd start with um, the smallest or lowest height component to the board now what we've got here are a couple of surface mount voltage regulators so they're going to go there and there. Now when you're soldering surface mount, there are many ways of doing it. Um, generally I use a gel type flux, but I've left that in the fridge at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just use some of this. Just paint that on. Now I use two, two different uh, diameters of uh, solder. 0 0.7, which is what everyone uses, and 0 0.4 for surface mount, really thin stuff. Um, generally, the 0 0.4 is better because it gives you more control over it. So we're just going to tin one pad. There we go. So I've tinned the middle pad. And then all you do then is use a pair of tweezers to manoeuvre it in position while we solder it. So I'm going to hold it like that. Just going to make sure these are both the same. 2596s. Yeah, just an adjustable voltage regulator. Okay, so I'm going to grab hold of the component it's important to keep it flat when you do this. Just flux that up. Never have too much flux. Okay. So. Now that I've tinned that one pad, I can line it up. And then just heat it. Should just drop on. Yep, so we can see here we've got a nice joint across the ground plane. What we've got to do is just clean up the top side of flux. A bit of IP8. Love it. Go. A bit of tissue. 
nice yeah so there we go it's all soldered on no problem although the problem with not using um, gel flux is sometimes you get a piece uh, soldered that's okay but it it doesn't look that great so I'm gonna pause this and uh, get some gel flux and just reflow that all right so I'm back again and uh, I've got some well it, it's cheap Chinese flux it's like a, a an Amtec clone and uh, yeah this stuff is really good so we're just going to squeeze some of this in on place and it's still bloody hell it needs to warm up because it's been in the bloody fridge there we go so it literally only takes a small amount I don't know if you can see that there like that but it's literally a little tiny grain of rice size piece you don't need any solder at this point we're just going to reflow it Nice. So I'm just going to hold the iron on and pull it away. Unfortunately, it has bridged. That. So, use a little bit of desolder braid and just take a little bit of that away. There we go, lovely. Flux in helps that. Get a much nicer looking joint afterwards using some flux or decent flux even although the downside to it is you do get a lot of residue afterwards it's an absolute bastard to clean off well it's easy enough to clean off it's just a bastard having to do it and no one likes uh, shitty soldier joints so, I don't know if you can see this very well in the light, but it's now left a, a nice gunky residue. But, it's a bit, ah, uh, there you go. It's, it's isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, and it's gone. Just like that. Boom. Very nice. I'll evaporate. Speaking of which, we should put this away. If you do uh, get liquid flux, um, I keep it in the fridge. So I keep it in one of these. I take the pressure off the, uh, the handle, keep it in the bag. And I also put it in a, a tub. So I appreciate the fridge isn't 
best place, but also keep it in the, in one of these as well, so that it is completely sealed away from anything. Okay. Yep. That looks pretty good. Oh, look at there. Superb. Right, I'm going to crack on with the other components. Right, so, it's not been very long and this fucker's now assembled, so all I've got to do is clean this up, rip the dragon apart and uh, shove it in. Fantastic. So, in a bit. Okay, so, here's the top off my dragon and uh, yeah, as we can see here, I've got a bit of a, a mod going on but when I was uh, playing around with the RGB to HDMI and uh, we're going to have to remove that. I'll just take that off there. I soldered these onto the back of the thing as a bit of a hack up. But um, yeah. So this is the power board as it sits in the back of the Dragon. This entire block is going to come out. So we're just going to... I'll do this while I've got... Do that. I've already taken the screws out. So the whole thing will just... Yeah, it will just lift out, just like that. And we're not going to need that anymore. So now all we've got to do is get the other board back in, get it all cleaned up, and uh, yeah, we're ready to test it. So I'm going to put the camera down and uh, back in a second. Okay, so here we are back. Um, I've got the board in position after I realised, like an absolute numpty, that I'd missed that, which is uh, the minus supply. Um, yeah, <laughs> that switch is between minus 5 and minus 12 volts, so I had to solder that on. But I also realised that these pins over here, these join to the video connector. And the mod that I had on the old board, this janky as fuck bit of solder in here meant that I could use the RGB to HDMI to take these signals for sampling into the analog board to give us an HDMI output so luckily I can just plug these in here and here and we've got exactly the same functionality on the 8-bit port which is brilliant one of the things I've noticed is um, that it doesn't quite match up with the posts in the back here um, I'm going to make some sort of uh, 3D printed uh, stand so that it sits properly because right now it can only it can only be fixed on these two pins here. So yeah, let's power this fucker up and uh, see what happens. Before I do that, you might be able to see here. Let's just zoom in. And I've lost that. Uh, come on, focus. Right there, I've broken that resistor off. That's deliberate, and that's because of the RGB to HDMI, um, and that means that unfortunately we're going to get a black and white picture. And nope, let's plug in first, that might help. Okay, so I'm going to use my Ultimate 64 power supply. It's only 2 amps on the 12 volt line, but for what we're about to do, that should be alright. So let's just power that up and there we go, black and white picture. So over here I've got a Casduino Chucky egg, you know it. So let's, uh, let's just power this on. Yep. And that looks like it's going and look at that, found Chucky. Now the first thing I'll notice is um, the video is notoriously poor in a dragon anyway but this is somewhat worse than it was with the other board. We'll have to investigate why. This is actually coming out on the uh, composite so yeah I'm not quite sure why it's looking worse than it did before. 
It is truly diabolical though, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's just the uh, Luma. There's no chrome in there because it's been, it's been severed on that resistor for the RGB to HDMI. Yeah, that, that's even more shit than usual. Alright, so that's, that's loading Chucky Egg in, anyway. So, back to this uh, power board. These are brilliant. I like this, this is really well designed. Um, the instructions are brilliant and it was well packaged. I've got no problem recommending that to anyone. If you've got a Dragon, whop one of these in, because this here, in, in you know, in today, that's, this is, this is just bollocks, you know what I mean? So, this is a far better solution. Um, I don't know if I'm going to mod this dragon yet and uh, whop in a 24 volt transformer directly inside along with an HDMI. I'm two minds on that one yet. I may I may drop in a little switch mode power supply here and then my RGB to HDMI here. Yeah, maybe. I have to think about that one. But I'm certainly going to create a little little bracket because you can't, even if you hold this down, see it's not quite doesn't quite sit right um, it lines up with these two holes perfectly um, but yeah there's nothing over here to support it so I'll, I'll make something um, the, the power is quite well central on the, the back port there when the D sub's gone not that it matters much it's just a, a barrel connector but yeah I really really like it um, how are we doing here uh, 80% nice yeah so so far so good no real issue here board's doing what it's meant to be doing hasn't blown the arsehole out of anything so that's good 91 percent <coughs> i like the addition of the uh, rgb header there um I'm sure that's for another board. Not quite sure which one. Oh, clip. Look at that. Look at that. And we are in. So, no issues at all. Power board, easy to build, good instructions, well packaged. There's nothing really negative to say about this. Nothing at all. It works as it should. And it uses a sensible power supply, 12 volts. None of this bloody, God knows what bollocks, from a really funky wound transformer. Still, not too worried about that picture because I'll be going RGB to HDMI anyway, so that's no problem. But yeah, other than that, the Dragon Plus power board. It's a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.